So what happens when you run out of electrons and you're building your structure? Well, it is possible that you're going to need to use multiple bonds to build it. So I've got a couple examples coming up here. Uh, we'll start off with carbon dioxide in the next slide. And I just follow the same rules. So for everything, whenever I'm drawing a Lewis structure, if I follow these same rules, you'll see how we need to figure out if we have to do multiple bonds, a double bond, or a triple bond. So again, we add it up. We've got carbon. We've got oxygen. I've got two oxygens. Oxygen is right over here. It's got six valence electrons, so I get 12 electrons from oxygen. Carbon is right here in the one, two, three, four. So it's got four. I'm going to move that four over here just to make it easy. When I add this up, I've got 16 electrons to build this with. Now, I'm going to get rid of this just so I have a little more room now to draw this out. So I put my carbon in the middle because of the electronegativity of carbon compared to oxygen. And I've got to bond that to my oxygen. I'll just put them like this. I think it's easiest to start just putting them off to the side. And if we need to move them around later, we can do that. I've used two, four electrons, and I have 16 total I get to use. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So I've used up all my electrons. Um, right here, I built my skeleton structure. I used up all my electrons. I do not have a formal charge, so I don't need to do that. Um, resonance structures, not sure about that one yet. Go ahead and check my answer. All of them should have eight electrons around the outside edge. This oxygen has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This oxygen has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This carbon has two, four. So I must not be done because this carbon is not happy. Now, sometimes people try to add more electrons, but you can't. You only have 16 electrons to build this whole thing. And this is where double bonds come in. So because carbon does not have enough around it, it's going to call up this oxygen. It's going to say, all right, we're going to need to share those two. So that oxygen will move those electrons down there. Of course, that's hypothetical move. And <clears throat> it'll look like this. Now we've got a double bond on that side. When we go to add them up, though, we still only have two, four, six around the carbon. So we need to look at the other side. This oxygen can share those two electrons in a double bond. And now... If we count them up, this oxygen has two, four, five, six, seven, eight. This oxygen has two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Carbon has two, four, six, eight. Let me redraw this out to show you how it really looks. We've got carbon with a double bond and a double bond to oxygen. Oxygen has its two lone pairs over here, and this oxygen has its two lone pairs over here. So that's what we should see when we have carbon dioxide. Another one. Looking at silicon dioxide, we add these up. We've got one silicon. We've got oxygen, and we have two of those. Oxygen is right over here in the one, two, three, four, five, six, group six. So we're going to get 12 electrons to build from oxygen. Silicon is right here, which means it's one, two, three, four. We get four electrons from there. I'm just going to move it over so we can see this. We get 16 electrons. Silicon in the middle. Oxygen's off the side. I've used two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So we go back and we start checking off our list all the way down the line we go to check our answer and one thing we should find just like we found in the last example is that this silicon only has four electrons around it it needs to have eight electrons and we can't add more so now somebody has to share we will take doesn't really matter we can take those electrons right there and move them up we can take those ones and move them up to share we can clean this off um, and this is our structure for silicon dioxide Carbon monoxide is a little bit different, but we're going to follow again the exact same rules that we've been doing the whole time. I add up my carbon and I add up my oxygen, so carbon is right over here. 
I get four electrons from that and my oxygen right here we've dealt with it several times I get six electrons from that I add them up I get ten electrons to build this whole thing now obviously nothing's at the center they're just bonded together when I put that bond in I've used up two I can use ten so I've got two there uh, let's start putting some around here three four five six seven eight nine ten I've got a problem because I ran out of electrons and carbon is not happy now my oxygen has eight around it so it's perfectly fine when I run into this situation and I can't add more electrons I know that there has to be multiple bonds so let's start seeing what we can do what if we ask this oxygen to share those so now if we total up how many carbon has around it it's got one two four six each of those bars is worth two so carbon now has six and oxygen has two four five six seven eight oxygen's happy let me fix the bottom of this oxygen but the carbon's not happy so we can't add more electrons it must mean that we need another multiple bond so what if oxygen was to share these ones down here let's see how carbon is now carbon's got two four six seven eight and oxygen has two four six seven eight now they're both happy let me draw this a little more cleanly so you can see what this should look like a triple bond we got one more thing we need to look at and this is the final things um, resonance hybrids so what happens if we end up with a double bond somewhere on our molecule and a single bond somewhere else how do we represent this?